Hi, welcome to Faith and Bible ASMR. Thank you for joining me today. We're going through Psalm 23 Bible study today, and I'm looking forward to hearing or hearing it. It is such a special psalm. If you enjoy growing closer to God and doing it in a peaceful atmosphere, then I'm glad you found this channel, and I hope that you will subscribe and join us. So let's look at what our Bible study says to us today. If you didn't catch the previous video, it is the Bible reading of Psalm 23, and it's in three different versions. So if you want to hear the full psalm, you can just go back to that. It'll be linked up above at the end of this video. So let's get started. This study is by Lisa Turkhurst, and we start out with her saying, I'm thankful I'm not the author and finisher of my faith story. I would never have had the courage to write my story with the twists and turns that it's taken. I certainly wouldn't have picked the journey my family has been on. As we have walked through a long season of hardship, I have been devastated beyond what I thought I could survive at times. But I've also been incredibly blessed and humbled as God has proven himself beyond my ability to comprehend. Maybe you're in the devastatingly dark middle of an unchosen journey one that leaves you tempted to pull away from the Lord because how could a good God lead me to such a difficult place? Oh friend, I understand. So does David, the shepherd destined to be king who penned the words of Psalm 23. David's desperately honest cry in Psalm 22 Verse 1 reveals he was well acquainted with discouragement and despair. It says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Despite the agony and distress we read about in Psalm 22, Today's passage reveals David still knew where his hope was found. This shepherd boy needed a great shepherd, the Lord, and we do too. So how do we keep choosing to follow our shepherd when he leads us into valleys we would rather avoid? We can begin by remembering two truths about the Lord. Number one is that he will never lead us carelessly. Today's passage of scripture opens with a serene picture. It, it's in verses one to three. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. We may imagine lush green hills like you find in Ireland, but David's reality was the steep, rocky, dry Judean hills hills that had to be carefully traveled in order to get to the water and vegetation waiting in the valleys below. Shepherds leading their flocks also had to be cautious about the timing of their trips. Hard rains could quickly lead to flash floods in a gorge. When a shepherd knew a storm was coming, he wouldn't allow the sheep to be down in the gorge because they would drown. 
The shepherd patiently waited until the storm passed before leading his flock down to drink. So not only did sheep have to trust where the shepherd was leading them, they had to trust when he was leading them. Our shepherd wants to get us to the still waters. He wants us to lie down and rest where it's safe. But we have to trust that his timing is perfect and his provision is good. Number two is that he will always lead us intentionally. The end of Psalm 23 verse 3 says, He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The very reputation of the Lord is at stake in his leading. That means that we can trust he will always lead us in perfect ways for our goodness and for the sake of his name. A friend of mine who lives in Israel says the phrase paths of righteousness can actually be described as circles of righteousness. It's like the circular paths going around the mountain. If you were to try to travel straight up and over a mountain, that would be incredibly hard and potentially deadly. So when a good shepherd would lead lead the flock, he would travel around the mountain, maybe even in a zigzag pattern that formed a picture of circles around the mountain because it was the safest path. Another interesting fact is that the Hebrew word for paths refers to well-worn paths or deep ruts that are actually good ruts. These ruts were important because they marked the safest paths. While these paths could be formed by one shepherd over time, it's more likely they were formed by other shepherds who had gone before them, generations of shepherds wisely walking the same paths. Even today you can literally look at the hills in Israel and see paths the shepherds have been walking for generations. I wonder what deep ruts or paths have created in your life of regularly walking with God. What deep, positive places have others forged that you could follow in? I encourage you to remind yourself of those paths, of those regular rhythms of your relationship with God. These paths of righteousness are good because they always circle back to God. Let's keep walking those paths daily and let them lead us back to Him again and again and again. If you're in a low valley right now, gracious, do I ever know what that looks and feels like? But let me speak life into your worn out broken down, hurting heart. I've lived the horrors where I couldn't see any way out, but there's always a way with God. As a woman peeking over the edge of my own miracle, I want to encourage you to stay close to him. Stay close to people who love him and he will make a miraculous way. One you couldn't have imagined, but one that is perfectly timed and planned. I'm praying for you, friend. As shepherds lead their sheep, they know they will pass through fear-inducing dark places. But if the sheep are with the shepherd, he can protect them and comfort them. David understood this truth. In Psalm 23, 4, we read, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Shadows may seem frightening, but shadows cannot hurt us. The shadow of a bear can indicate that a bear is close, but the shadow itself can do no damage. Also, the presence of a shadow is evidence of the presence of light. Jesus is not only our good shepherd, as it says in John 10, 11. He is our light, as it says in John 8, verse 12. The closer we are to him, the closer we are to the light. We don't need to fear the shadows. We just need to keep moving forward with Jesus. And if we come across danger, our shepherd has his rod and staff. These are tools that the shepherds used for protection against predators stabilizing sheep on steeply rocked places and even checking the depth and muddiness of water so sheep wouldn't drown or get stuck. There is such powerful protection available to us when we stay in his presence. So she prays for us. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful for all I find in your presence, your peace, your provision, your protection. Today I'm declaring that I'm sticking with you, even when my heart is hurting, even when I don't understand what you're doing. I'm choosing to trust your love for me. I'm choosing to follow Jesus, the shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep, the one who willingly died for me. In Jesus' name, amen. So our question to think about today is, trusting the Lord to be our shepherd can be hard. We want control. We want answers now. And we most certainly do not want to go to the hard, scary places. But the Good Shepherd has good plans for his sheep. How can you let the Shepherd shepherd you this week? How can you let him lead you in paths of righteousness? How can you let him be your guide and comfort? I'm sure we all have ways that we could do that and things that we could surrender to him so that he can help us with them. I'm going to pray for us. Dear Father, thank you so much for each person watching. Lord, I pray each and every one of us would think about that. How can we let you shepherd us more this week? How can we keep from trying to control or take charge and, and lead? Lord, help us to let you lead. Help us to be patient and to see what you're doing in our lives. And Lord, I pray that you would just draw close to us and we would really seek you. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. Bye, friend. Thank you for joining me.